Yeah, I think we should we should move on to um, to John, um, who's going to talk to us about um, dragonflies and, and being in charge of the um, the little committee that um, expert committee that does all the um, dragonfly and damselfly identification for the, for Odonata map. Um, I, I actually have to confess that I, I actually saw John for the first time um, when we had our, our sort of trial um, virtual biobash a few weeks ago. And uh, so it's been an amazing experience all around uh, these little events and actually meeting people. So, uh, so John told us that um, it's about 10 years ago that he took his, his first um, photograph of a, a damselfly and, um, and, and, uh, and, and I think hopefully you're talking to us about the journey of getting from there to, uh, to where you are now. So over to you John. And, we leave you to do whatever you want to do, however you like it in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Thanks, John. Uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, yeah, thank you for changing the topic midweek and now suddenly changing the topic again, but uh, let's go. Um, that, that was the original topic and then somewhere midweek it changed to how did I get so passionate, but I think the two mix in well together, Liz, so uh, yep. let's try to go. Well, I am passionate about dragonflies and, and I'm known as the Mad Hatter and everywhere I go, people just ask, what new species have you, have you photographed and what have you found? And yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's something that I cannot explain. Um, it's like meeting your wife. You know, that first encounter, that black swan event uh, happened to me about 12 years ago, sitting in the shade, my feet inches from the water and this little insect came perched just right next to me, pitch black, and this translucent wings and the black bands across the wings, and I mean, it was beautiful. I, I forgot to take a photograph of the thing. And uh, I, I was out photographing butterflies and what have you for, for Steve. But in any case, I didn't know what it was, and uh, I put it up on all the Facebook groups I had, and uh, nobody knew what it was. I then went Googling and about a week after my wife actually found the website of uh, Wawi Tarbot and, and, and Michelle. And that was the, the start of my journey. Um, and it, it's networking, we're talking about networking. It's not only about the, the species itself, the dragonflies, it's also about the networking because that also gives the energy. And, and, and meeting Warwick and his wife was, was life-changing. I mean, the passion that those people had, the numerous uh, emails they answered, uh, it, it just started me off and, and wanting to know more. Of course, it wasn't well known. There was only a few people. At that stage, I wasn't part of the um, virtual museum yet. Um, Steve, you can talk about that a little bit later, how you blackmailed me into going into a virtual museum. Um, yeah, so just, just quickly, um, Steve was hiding all my butterfly photographs and then the one day he said, John, I'm not hiding any of your butterflies on the Facebook page anymore. I'm only going to do it on virtual museum. So yeah, he, he blackmailed me into virtual museum and thank you for that, Steve. I mean, that, that's just been another start of, of, of a big journey. And uh, there's, there's other influential people, you know, networking, um, the Gerard Diedrichs, the Felicity Grunlings, uh, the, those people. And then lately in my life, Andries de Vries, Sharon Stanton, she's here tonight, Corey, Ryan, um, all helping with, with, with the identifications and, and, and keeping me on my toes. I mean, getting an a email or a message and say, John, yeah, just look again at record 99030. You've been smoking some good weed. And uh, yeah, then, then you go and see and, and, and you see you made a mistake and you correct it. But then on the other hand, it's also about the species, the insect, the dragonfly. 
you know, when, when I first saw the website and I got a name for that, uh, for that species, it, it, it just galvanized me. And from there on, everyone I photographed, I sent to Warwick. I mean, not being on his, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, well, he, he received thousands of emails, I'm sure. And, and why he didn't just block me, I, I don't know up to today. Um, and slowly you, you, you start to understand that you've got to do something you cannot just rely on other people to give you an IE. And then you start reading and then a package arrive on your doorstep and it's 10 or 15 scientific papers and a message from Warwick saying, John, enjoy. You've had so many questions. There it is. Have a read through. I can't answer everything. So th those have been really on the one side, people that, that continuously energize me and, and still today energize me. But on the other side, it's the insect itself. I mean, it's beautiful. There's so many of them, 165. I haven't seen all of them. I would love to see all of them. But it's also those things that we do not know that, that just energize me. They, this, I mean, up until two, three years ago, we didn't know what the female of the denim dropping looked like. We didn't know what the female of the half shade dropping looked like. And for now, A group female sprites is still a mystery. Uh, there's so much work that can go into that areas. It's wide open. And that just gives the energy. And then the networking, because you have people that you can discuss it with. You have people that say, look at this, let's try this, let's try that. And, and that, that's all begun with a virtual museum on my part, because that's a database that you can draw from. Um, the, 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 the previous presentation is looking for data. The Virtual Museum for Ordinata has got a huge amount of, of data. Then it's also, my time is running out, but this, it's, it's also about the identification. You know, it, the mystery there is to identify a dragonfly from photographs alone. Yes, the scientists have it in hand. They can look at the secondary genitalia and they can look at the claspers and they can do DNA. But how do we, when looking at a, at a dragonfly, be able to identify it? And, and, and that's a mystery that we've been together as a group. Um, Andre, Sharon, Corey, Ryan, the people of the, uh, of the ID panel, We've, we've been working uh, quite a lot behind the scenes on, on, on getting things together and building stuff to make it easier for us to help identify people. The other thing that energizes me is the life cycle of these things, what we still don't know. And, and, and that's all about reading. Um, that's all about contacting people. Um, the, the Cadies of the world, the Warwicks of the world, getting the information together. So yes, uh, for, for me, I, I'm passionate and, and 10 minutes is, 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 is not enough time to, to really talk about this. I just want to see if I can show you one photograph. I'm going to share the no, a photograph, a little um, video clip. This is an emperor dragonfly. And, and I'm going to show the, I'm going to try and show the video clip. Um, No. Can everybody see? Is my screen shared? Okay, let's see. This is the Emperor Dragonfly hunting. <clears throat> Let me just see if I can 
can get my screen back. <clears throat> Liz, can you unmute and help me here? Um, okay, yeah. stop sharing. There it is. Stop sharing. <clears throat> okay, sorry guys. This is a video clip that I saw a little while ago. <clears throat> and I mean, it's an alien looking species, that, that thing. Uh, and I hope you, you guys enjoyed it as much as I did the first time I saw it. This is, the, this is, a, this is from a nightmare. I mean, that thing has got little claws under his jaw. And it's from the speed of light, and it's got muttons like a baseball player. And it grabs, and then it brings it up to his mouth. And the mouth is a, is, is a miracle by itself. It's got a lower jaw that drops down and flinges open. The top part of the mouth opens up, and from in his mouth, two little arms with claws appear, and they grab the prey, and they come in. And, and I mean, there's just absolutely no way that that prey can, can escape. So it's all these little things that, that just energizes me. It, it, it's, I get so passionate about it. There's so much to learn. It, it, it's such a, a beautiful species. And, and, and I hope when you guys go out into the field and, and, and you see the dragonfly, take a photograph, post it. It might be something we know, it might be something that we don't know. And if it, we don't know, we go and find out. And, and that is what energizes all of us. Those things that we're not sure about, that we can go and investigate. We, we citizen science, scientists, we're not scientists, but the citizen scientists do contribute a lot to our knowledge. And, and I hope this, just this little video clip and, and, and the people I've mentioned, it just energize you guys as well when you're going out in the field just not only birds and 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 whatever you're interested in take a photograph of that damsel fly there is still so much so much to learn in south africa about them thanks guys thank thank you john thanks very much um, was there questions for um for john anybody want to are there questions in the, in the little things it was a, Okay. Um, there is one question by Kate Brown that asks if there is any tips for getting photos of dragonflies in flight when they are flying. Dragonflies in flight, John. That's a challenge. It, it is a challenge. Um, it all depends on your gear, but if you've got quite decent gear that can can shoot uh, shoot at uh, continuous uh, mode, uh, my suggestion would be to stand back, not not try and be too close, and try and get a, a clear background. <clears throat> it's not always possible, but as far as possible, try and get the clear background, or then focus your camera on where the peer, clear background is. It's easier for your uh, automatic focus to pick it up. But what I prefer is manual focus, and I try and pick up the dragonfly from as far as possible, and then uh, try and get my zoom and shoot as high speed as possible. And, and sometimes you get lucky. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, John. I think John, that was an amazing, um, amazing presentation, and I, and I, I you know, as a, I, I'm, I'm a kind of a scientist. I'm a uh, I'm a statistician. I'm uh, I'm not a biologist. So when I'm uh, when I'm in biology, really, I I'm I'm doing citizen science, and, uh, and 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 I I think one of the things we actually want to do is actually is to blur the uh, the distinctions between um, scientist and uh, and citizen scientist. Citizen scientist is not a, a great word, but we've not come up with. Um, with anything better ever, so um, you know, people like um, like Galileo. Galileo started out in life as a um, as a as a draftsman um, working for an uh, an architect, and he was discovering all the laws of gravity when he was um, when he was an, an architect's draftsman. And only later on that he uh, that he actually went into uh, science uh, professionally. 
But uh, and there are lots and lots of examples um, like that, and, um, and 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 we've kind of um, um, put up a wall between scientists and citizen scientists and made science something that you have to be a little bit special to to have to do, and and that that's not um, not totally right. But that's a topic, a huge topic for a for another discussion. So I think I'm. A